Hi, I'm Ruth Wilson from Architectus and with me is Peter Millett from our collaborators Six Degrees Architects and my colleague Jaden Peacock who was the project architect for this project. So we'll start with an acknowledgement of country, acknowledging all the countries we meet on today and the lands of the Jaja Warong where this project is located. We pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. In 2018, Bendigo Kangan Institute was successful in obtaining funding of $60 million to undertake a much needed campus revitalization. The campus is situated on the edge of Bendigo CBD. It's the site of the original School of Mines developed during the gold rush. Two significant heritage buildings remain on site and a third from the 1920s is considered important as the former technical school. A master plan which divested the western portion of the campus had underpinned the business case. This blue zone is now the site of the new Bendigo Law Courts, which is nearing completion. The community zone in green encompasses the historic former Mechanics Institute and Free Library and is yet to be redeveloped. And the education zone in red is the subject of this presentation. The master plan had suggested a single large four level building enveloping the former tech school and connecting to E with a large open green space facing the busy Chapel Street. And expense, as expensive constraints became known to us, which included um, an IT hub servicing all of Bendigo TAFE as well as neighbouring um, regional prisons and a town sewer that went through the site, we had to look at some other siting options. And as we got to know the diverse students from hair and beauty, hospitality, creative arts, through to work ed, VCAL and adult migrant English, we never saw any of them use this big open space. They would huddle around the edges in their cohort groupings or not hang out on campus at all. And after spending time in Bendigo, um, we headed to a much finer grain of approach yielding an interesting array of more intimate outdoor spaces that seemed to fit the city better uh, and allowed cohorts to ident identify strongly and take their take pride in their parts of the campus. So you see here two new buildings, G and J. Simone Bliss, landscape architects, conceived the landscape approach. The Jaja Wurrung are the original inhabitants inhabitants of this region and refer to the area as upside down country, reflecting the dramatic alteration of the landscape by mining. But the natural environment is powerful and lasting and if left to its own devices over time, it will reclaim even the most altered landscape. So the landscape strategy accelerates this reclamation. And the jewel in the landscape is the six seasons calendar to the right there. Uh, built by the Jaja Rong in co collaboration with the design team. It talks of country, it is a place to educate visitors and it's a focal point for the TAFE Indigenous Studies cohort. We're going to take you through the buildings now. I'll hand over to Jay, um, who will take us through the two new buildings. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, G houses hair and beauty cohorts, as well as the learning hub. It takes cues from its neighbours Heritage Victoria wanted to see a solid building with punched openings, whilst Bendigo TAFE wanted an open, welcoming building that put learning on display. So the building appears more solid when viewed obliquely and opens up upon approach. The showcase windows show the public the training that is happening on the inside. The hair and, the hair and barber salons face the street with shop front windows. And this is a view from inside the campus with another showcase window on the second floor salon. The building is laid out on a rational grid. The learning hub over the over ground level and first level, it's shown in green. Hair and beauty in the pink on ground and uppermost levels. The hair salon is celebrated um, with the exter externally through the concrete linear forms. The spaces are flexible and reconfigurable. A central atrium links all learning spaces, lit from above with Jaja Rurong's wise crow wa guiding students 
This is an artwork by First Nations artist Mandy Nicholson. Next up is Building J. On Chapel Street, Housing Foundation Studies and BCAL. Again, a rational, a rational repeater grid with generous floor to floor heights to allow adaption of the building over the decades. A range of reconfigurable classrooms with breakout and social spaces. As well as special programs, this is the Life Skills Lab where special needs students come in and learn skills for independent living. Wire guide students through the campus in this direction and is also visible from inside. This is a view from inside the campus showing the active rooftop for the VCAL students. I'll now hand over to Pete, who will take us through the heritage and adaptive reuse buildings. Thanks, Jaden. The first is building E, the former School of Mines, uh, now housing hospitality and the Industry Innovation Centre. Once unloved, unloved and underutilised, <clears throat> it's now a hub of activity with cafe, a cafe to Gray, Hargrave Street and a bakery selling hospitality student wares to the public. Uh, we've included some plans, they're in the pack, uh, but generally it's a hospitality on ground with a restaurant and an innovation hub. And on first floor, it's more training facilities for hospitality and staff facilities. Training kitchens are inserted into the heritage spaces and this is looking at a new double height space uh, on the south side. The innovation hub uh, is activated with a, uh, a new insertion within the heritage fabric. And looking at the rear of that uh, extension. One minute. The services and VT are housed in a new annex and a view inside the campus. The new trees are still very small, but they're coming from indigenous seed stock. Building H, take you quickly. The building has good bones, but in very poor condition with no disabled access. Uh, plans, it's generally a multi-purpose building with principally directorate and staff functions with some teaching. Finally, building P very quickly, a lighter touch, uh, but here showing a digital learning commons. Uh, and just in conclusion, we're really weaving into the historic fabric of Bendigo, the new city campus celebrates TAFE's industrial heritage and champions its ongoing contribution to regional prosperity. It communicates to prospective students, industry partners, and the broader community that Bendigo TAFE is industry focused, future focused, approachable and an inspiring place to learn. Thank you very much. Fabulous, thank you. Um, I wonder if you could speak to some of the sustainability initiatives that you incorporated. Yep, so um, Jay, help me out. We're, we're Five Star Green Star accredited. Um, I think the biggest sustainability initiative is the amount of existing fabric that we retained and reused. Um, you know, that. I think um, there were times when we regretted that. But. I think I've, I've got a bit of a hook on that uh, too. The, the, the existing buildings, it's very difficult to service those old buildings. So what, what the services guys did is put a whole heap of plant on building G yep. in between them. And we've got two bridges connecting them with uh, heated and chilled water running to those buildings so that we minimize the amount of plant in the heritage buildings and centralised, centralised plants always the best way to go with these things, yeah. And climatically, Bendigo, as you know, Megan, so hot and so cold at different times of the year. So this landscape strategy really allows, you know, different parts of the campus to be occupied at different times um, in, in comfortable ways. Mm. Mm. I was thinking about climate when I asked that question. Thank you. Um, I just had a question about the obviously very tricky and challenging heritage building conditions. Um, if there were any quite a particular architectural strategies that you guys employed at the sort of interfaces um, of those heritage buildings um, or something that you can elaborate on. Um, 